guys, uh, welcome back to Simply Minis. We are gonna put this motor back together now that we promised you we'd do this and we finally got all the parts here at the house uh, that we're gonna use to build a 155 stroker. Um, I didn't have time to get the cases bored, so we're not gonna do a 178, uh, but there may come a day where I do get to that video. Um, we're gonna start with putting all the bearings back in the lower end here. I got the cases all cleaned up. Make sure you can use soap and water or degreaser or whatever you want, uh, but try and clean the cases before you put it back together. You obviously want to make sure all the gasket material is gone and that uh, you're going to have a, a clean case to work with because once you start putting fresh bearings in there, obviously you don't want dirt and stuff from the outside of the case going in the, uh, in the bearings. Um, so we're going to start here. I like to use uh, Permatex Ultra Slick engine assembly lube. I just put a little bit on the outside of the bearing before I'm gonna before I'm gonna put it in. Stuff's really sticky. But it's good stuff and it works well. Kind of just prep your surfaces. Try and put it on there square when you start, you know. Uh, you can eyeball it, usually get it pretty close, close enough. Um, I have an installer tool, a lot of people don't. If you don't, you can use a, a socket and an extension, which I will do on these bearings just because I don't have uh, a piece small enough to install those. Um, just use a little dead blow. change I got harder and kind of like more of a thud so you're sure it's in there um, you can use a press but honestly these are so you can they're so easy to put in you don't you really don't need it but you can see if you look at the edge here that it's it's all the way flush and that's how you'll know if it's good or not and if you've gone far enough um, now the next bearing that we're gonna install is this guy. The bearing kit we're using is a TBW1121. Uh, this is TB parts kit. I've used them a ton and I've never had a problem. So um, the bearings that they come with are made by, I believe it's NTN. NTN, yeah. Yeah. Um, so on this one, we're gonna use a socket. Let me put some. Square in there. Socket land up. Now make sure when you are installing the bearings, you are hitting on the outside race. You do not want to hit the inside race. That will ruin the bearing. So whatever socket you use, outside race. over take a look you can see it's flush in there again move on to the next bearing this is the next bearing it's a unique looking one pretty cool bearing Socket again. You can hear that tone change. And that one is flush as well. Um, now these have screws that hold them in um, on, on these two. Uh, they do not retain on this one. Uh, it's just the way that Kawasaki did it. 
So um, the kit, the bearing kit, the bottom end kit comes with fresh screws for this, which is kind of nice. So you can toss your old screws and put brand new ones in there. Uh, these don't got to be crazy tight, you know, just pretty much as comfortably snug as you can put them with a screwdriver. These are like your number two tip screwdriver, and then the other one is more of like a, a number three tip screwdriver. You wanna make sure you use a fatter one on these because these will strip out with uh, using a number two tip screwdriver. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, this case is pretty much prepped and ready to go. So we're gonna get that out of the way for now. And move on to this case. This case is the, uh, the case with the very unique needle bearing in it, which is sometimes very difficult to get out. We had a hard time getting the last one out, um, but this is the needle bearing that goes back in it. I like to put it with the numbers facing out. There's a smooth side, no numbers. But this one is a little bit more of a challenge. It's kind of small. The lip up here is a little bit skinnier and you can damage it pretty easy. So you don't want to be too rowdy with it or anything like that. that in there as square as you can. socket make sure we're straight still this one goes in hard fellas so you know just try and be as gentle as you can that's what I do trying when I pick my socket I try to get one that sits on a little bit more towards the outside of the edge because I don't want to tear it up. Okay, we'll take a look at the other side, see if we're flush yet. We still got a little bit of a ways to go. So there is a hole here and you can see that we haven't quite made it all the way to that outside edge there. So we gotta beat on her some more. Might get a little bit smaller of a socket. Try and fit in the, uh, in the hole butter there. That might work better for me. Drive this the last of the way. Nope, still got some ways to go. Um, I might actually break out the regular hammer and get a better, better hit on it. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes
sometimes the dead blow you know softens up the hit too much now we are flush so we got one more bearing over here it is the exact same bearing as the other side case that we did This one, which is much nicer. Might have a little bit more to go in there. I'm going to give it a couple more taps. going to do just because it's easy and it's right here and now you got the uh, bearing to back it this is a new um, output shaft seal a little bit of lube on there put some on the inside so it's ready for when you put the shaft through and this I actually usually push in with my hands. Uh, you can get it really close with your hands and make sure she's there. Feel soft blue. Okay, so now we have another prepped case half. Um, no needle bearing, no bearing here. other cases prepped as well um, there's two o-rings that go here you want to make sure you don't forget those that's a that's a bad thing if you forget those that's a, a bad day now we uh, we got to install the crank um, the tool we're using is Johnny's tool so I'm actually going to have him uh, install the crank on here. Um, something we wanted to point out is this is the new um, cranks that TB Parts makes. And they changed the gear on the crank here to work with the 2010 plus stuff. Um, it's a smaller gear. This is the old gear. gear is actually a little bit bigger and I'll show you the differences in the uh, in the timing chains themselves this is old style chain this is new style chain so honestly if you can get an old style crank um, that you're better off because it's got the fatter timing chain on it uh, not that these really have any failure issues but you know in my book obviously the bigger the better um, you also have to if you are going to run the newer crank and you do have an 02 to 09 motor, you have to purchase this cam gear from TB Parts that will work along with that skinnier timing chain because the old timing gear, as you can see, is much different. So make note of that so you don't forget that part when you're sitting there trying to put your motor back together, make race weekend and uh, you don't got it. Alright, well first of all, make sure you uh, get your crank set up on the right side. First time I tried doing this, I ended up having the crank installed flip-flop the opposite way so I could pull it back out and reinstall it. That wasn't too fun. Um, if you have a press, you can do it that way. You gotta be careful with the cases. They will break um, if you force it too much. Ask me how I know. Yep, Johnny's broken one. Um, I have not broken one yet, but it will happen if you're not careful. 
Uh, if you do decide to use a press, just all I can say is make sure you support the case as well as possible, especially around where the bearing is actually pressing into the case. Um, so if you don't have this tool, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, really, you could uh, push it in with a hammer if you really wanted to. But yeah, the tool is pretty inexpensive. I got mine on Amazon. It was like 40 bucks for the case splitter and this uh, install tool puller, the install tool together. Um, it does help to have a couple of wood blocks or a couple of tires or whatever to stand the, the case on, but we'll do without for now. So, to start, just balance it like so. You'll have to get this nut here on. And what I do is I reuse one of the clutch nuts, I put it upside down. It doesn't have to be super tight, just kind of finger tight. Allow that to move. And you will install this threaded shaft coupler, whatever you want to call it. Just kind of finger tight again. And it usually come with these two uh, sticks, whatever you want to call them. And you will use this outer collar to get lined up on there. Nut spins on here. That goes right on the top. And you will essentially tighten this, which will pull the crank up into the case. So those rods are supporting this collar. Yes. And uh, basically, as he tightens the nut down, it is going to pull the crank up and through the cases. Right. You also want to make sure I kind of hold the connecting rod in my hand here. Yeah, because so that way you don't end up tightening it like this. <laughs> It'll get caught on the case and then you'll be in trouble. Right, so you'll want to hold it in the opening like that. And it will be a big old wrench. I don't know what the hell you're using this thing for, but it'll work for this. So, like I said, you will just. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Eventually it will get to a point where it gets pretty tight. And that will mean that the bearing is seated fully. And there you have it. It's that easy when you got the tool. And like I said, you can use a press and you can press it in there. And I've done it that way. I mean, you can beat it in there with a dead blow if you really want to. Uh, not ideal, but you know, if you don't have the tool, you don't have the tool and you gotta get it done. So yeah. I've done it all the ways and this way is obviously the best. There's multiple tools out there for this. Uh, you kind of like when you buy them, you gotta figure out how yours works. Yours might not necessarily work the same way that Johnny's does here. Yeah, you may not need to use a clutch nut to uh, you know, thread onto the end of the crank there. You know, come, like the kit that I bought came with a couple of couplers. It just didn't have the threads that matched my uh, crankshaft. So I had to figure something out and the clutch nut upside down was the best for me. Um, as you can see, it works pretty well. So our stroker crank's installed now. And uh, I'm going to pass the camera back over to Johnny. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to install the output shaft into the trans. So we can put the trans back in this case half. Um, if you think about it, the clutch side case half is like is like your home base. This is what everything's gonna stay in. The other case is what pulls away. 
So like Johnny was saying earlier, when you put your crank in, you got to make sure that you're putting it, it the right way. Um, so when you take your old crank out, just pay attention. There's a smaller gear on this side and a bigger gear on this side that runs your oil pump. Uh, if it's wrong, you'll know because your oil pump won't line up. So can't go too far, but it'd be really frustrating to have to pull the cases back apart. Um, that, that sucks. So make sure you pay attention to that. We're going to get the old trans over here. This is one half of the trans. This is the other half of the trans. Um, so this is just your shift fork. You can keep that together. Try and keep it together. It's much easier that way if you just keep the stuff together. But one thing to pay attention to is this first gear that comes off. There's a shim on the back. Don't lose it. Try and keep it in the same orientation. Just lay the gear down. Next one that's coming out this that's it very simple you can lay it right down in there so you don't mess it up now this one this has a snap ring on it and you got to get at that snap ring and get that off of there and then you can pull this gear off and, and swap the shaft out um, so you want to make sure you got a decent set of snap ring pliers I'll try and get a view in there for you but it's probably gonna be pretty difficult That's your snap ring. There's no holes. It's got like a beveled edge on it. And then you just stick your tips in there. And then this slides right off. That's it, that's your output shaft. That's how hard that situation is. Super easy. Take your brand new output shaft. This is a TV parts output shaft. Um, the part number for it. It's TBW. 1120 probably not the easiest to read but that's what it is i have good luck with these and the um 2010 plus output shafts uh, if you just buy an oem one those are supposed to be just as good which is what i have in my 178 stroker and i haven't had an issue so now literally just take this put some fresh oil on it just because gear slide it right back on prep your snap ring make sure it doesn't shoot off in your eye somewhat funny but not really because it does happen once you get it most of the way there you can kind of just push her down should lock in. Now this gear's locked on. Next step, take your gear. Next gear, slide that right back in there. Last one. Make sure your shim's there. There we go. Now your output shaft is installed. That's how easy that is. So the next step is you want to get your uh, your trans set up here to get ready to install back into the case. This runs in this brand new fresh bearing. Make sure you just get a little bit on there. It's going easier. Uh, when you put the trans in, you kind of got to you kind of got to slide everything in together. It's just easier that way. It works smoother. Um, there is a shim out here. I believe on this one. Yeah. Pay attention to that in case it slides off. Um, that is the only. That's the only one on that. Yeah, trans, that's the only side of the trans. scary one that you want to make sure you pay attention for, because uh, if you don't put that back in there, it, it will not work right. Yeah. Um. So these, you just kind of, they, they mesh together. When you put them together, they mesh. So when you do that, 
actually going to, uh, before we do that, I'm going to put some, some lube on this shaft too. slides in there kind of eyeball it all up let's just slide right in there I mean it's a pretty simple affair there everything's on there those two slide right in the cases there and that's it so the next step I personally like the Takagawa uh, four up shift drum so this is one, two, three, four up, neutrals at the bottom. There's no neutral in between one and two. Um, part number from Takagawa is 02-04-0026. Uh, you can buy these from Matt at Factory Mini Bikes. Yep. Uh, that's where I purchased mine. This just seems to be the best bang for the buck. I've never had any issues with them and the four up is, is what you want. So definitely don't want that neutral in the middle. That's a hundred percent for sure. Um, when I install this, I like to pull that this shaft out of the, the, re, the, the boss that it sits in. They just slide right into that, into that hole there. And then that allows you to kind of work the tip into here and make sure that these are all sitting in the slots that they're supposed to be. So this one, if you come over here, Johnny, see how this has one channel on it and then a second channel. This one rides in the back channel. This one rides in the front. Now that I have this one out, it's just easier to get the shift drum in there and then you could slide it in, slide your pins in. That's it. It's that easy to install a four-speed shift drum. Now to hold this shift drum in while you're working on the cases, John, if you want to it just a second. Okay. This is just an OEM 02 to 09 shift start. There's nothing special about it. You don't need anything crazy to make this work. Uh, factory transmission. This will turn it from a three speed into a four speed with this four speed shift drum. You don't need anything special. So there's a there's actually a, a detent here that fits inside there. Allows you to line it up. So it's a lot easier if you take this arm off. I usually don't, I fight it. <laughs> you could also just take the spring off of it. Yeah, you could take the spring off of it, but I pretty much just leave it in there and just fight the thing. This will hold that solid over there for us. Now we can go back to work on this side. So I had a little gear fall off right here. No big deal. Just make sure you put her back on. Actually on this gear, I can show you this because it's here. This actually has a sleeve on the inside. So if you ever do take this apart, which you really don't need to take this shaft apart, but if you do, make sure you pay attention to that too. It just slides right back on there. Okay, so after that, we basically are ready to put sealant on the cases and slap the other case half back on. Um, just make sure, like I said, you don't forget these two O-rings here. That it is, will leak oil. Yes, it will, and that is important, so just make sure you do it. Now, for sealant, uh, a lot of people use Yama Lou or uh, use Yama sealant from Yamaha or you know whatever whatever you like using if that's what you like using that's great uh, more power to you 
I literally go right to the auto store. I swear by this stuff, honestly. I pretty much use it almost for anything. But this is uh, called Ultra Copper. It, it's, it's exhaust gasket maker. Um, it's just your regular RTV sealant, but it's rated for heat. So it's always worked for me. I've never had a problem. Uh, so I'm gonna continue using it. Um, now, it's good to note that the bottom end bearing kit also comes with new dowel pins. So if your dowel pins are nasty, you got some freshies to toss right in here. So thanks TB Parts for thinking of that. A lot of times those get chewed up if you try and pull them out or anything like that. Um, so when I do the sealing on the cases, first one out of there, I just put it on by hand, real lightly. You don't. Uh, you try and keep it out of the cases. If you do get in the cases, just kind of wipe it out with your finger. Be all right. Really ain't gonna hurt nothing, but. got to be crazy with it. Just make sure there's a decent coating. Just kind of go around and double check. Make sure you got a good coating everywhere. You only get one shot at this, so. And then basically next time you take it apart, you have to peel all this shit off. Kind of make sure you do it right the first time kind of thing. Alright. That looks pretty solid in my book. So we are going to roll with it. These shafts over here, same thing. Just kind of get some lube on them, make it kind of easier to put everything together. Helps. Now you can put some on in the gears if you'd like. That's up to you. Now, the case is only going to go on so far, obviously, because you've got to press it back onto this bearing. Um, so, when you get to that point, I'll show you what we're going to do. So, the open shaft's going to come right through here. Try and get that all centered up. Now the main thing is the shift rods all got to kind of line up too. Everything's really got to go together and sync here, which isn't always easy. Kind of make sure all your dowel pins are lined up. Service manual recommends tapping them together with the mallet. <laughs> yes. Uh, Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a roo. I put mine together personally using the crank puller. Uh, I feel like. Yes, whichever way you go about it. Just don't want to go crazy hammering on the case. Yeah, I feel like for the sake of the channel and the fact that I try to show everything without using major tools so everybody can do it that maybe we'll just try a little bit of the, the old 
to have a zap. thing I ever get nervous about is the, uh, the shift shaft rods. If those don't line up, it's going to kind of hold you up pretty bad. I think we're getting somewhere. Looks like your bearing's about halfway in on the crank. Yep. So that's pretty good because we got our dowel pins are lined up. So that's I just keep double checking because I want to just look in there and make sure that everything looks all right and that we're not uh, you know binding up on anything. That's the most important thing. I come up here, kind of move around. You know, so you're putting the pressure. coming together which is probably the double pins about ready to slide in so we're getting there slow and steady Still moving. Still trying to get it the rest of the way together here. together with a screwdriver and some screws. Finish it the rest of the way. Okay, I think we're pretty close, so let's get a couple of the case bolts. We'll see if we can draw this by hand with the case bolts. Some of these are longer than others. Uh, honestly, the way I deal with it is I just you stick them in there. If they're if it's the long one and it don't work, you'll know. But let's just try and pull this together some. See where we get with that. Pushing the crank the rest of the way. I'm not even. I'm not pushing that hard at all on these screws. So you get to that point, you kind of feel like you got, you know, an eighth of an inch left or whatever, and it doesn't want to go the rest of the way. You can start tightening these down. Just be gentle with them. Hair creaking into the rest of the way. Once 
once you kind of got it all snug down we'll give it a couple more taps with the hammer to make sure everything's seated and then this is a way you can put the other case half on without having you know any press or any tools special tools but as you can see you you could dead blow the crank into the other side of the case half if if you really that uh don't have access to any of the stuff that you need to do that. Um, so one bolt there, that's obviously a long one. Short one there. Boom, that's a lower end back together. So now we're just gonna take this, give a couple of taps, make sure everything's seated. Make sure your trans still spins. That's important. If it doesn't, something bound up on you. good thing to try and make sure of is that your gears work so that you're not coming all the way back to this point if you mess something up so uh, as you can see now that it's in gear on the other side of the trans when I spin that you got gear and you can see as you change this that you're changing gears. That simple. Now you know all your stuff works. So that was a uh, solid putting a bottom end together, no issues. Now you just take your your rag here and you just wipe off the the orange if it's gonna bug you. You want to see it squished out a little bit? That's good. That means that you got decent coverage. easier to do this now than after it dries because after it dries you got to pick it off so it's just quicker okay so the hard part's done we're going to move on to um, the clutch side of the motor good place to go after you finished all that first thing we're gonna do is install the oil pump um, Takagawa sells a high output oil pump honestly I've never had an issue with the stock and I, I usually reuse it uh, I haven't had a problem so I'm gonna reuse it on this one because it's nothing crazy um, on my 178 stroker I use Takagawa pump but this is not so make sure you get your o-rings back in here there's one that fits there there's one that fits there and then to put this pump back on actually is a, uh, a dowel pin that fits in there you want to make sure that's in there it slides right into this boss here on the case so you can't really mess that up
So you kind of want to get the gear to a spot where you can put all the all the bolts back in. I mean, you can move it with the crank, but that's where you want it to be at. There's no timing on this. You just shove it in there and it's good to go. Not crazy tight. see how the crank spins that gear. Let's double check make sure all that's working. All right. Next, so you don't forget, tighten this up now. You don't want to forget that. A lot of guys do. This will back out and it don't shift no more. So it's an easy mistake to make. Uh, I'd say that after this, you'd want to install your shift shaft. So these right here, the way this works is these spread like this. And then they sit on this pin. So don't put it on there like this because it will not work right. You have to spread those and slide it on there. Um, this is going through a fresh seal on the other side, which we actually still have to install, so we should do that before we do this. So I don't gotta fight the shaft putting it in. This one on the other side of the case here. This is the ignition side. Got another little seal. This will come in your gasket kit that you get from uh, TV Parts. This is another seal that a lot of times you could almost push in there. But I'll get it seated and then I'll run it in the rest of the way. in here now. Takagawa sells a, a quick shift version of these. Um, I haven't personally used one. I know Johnny has and he likes it so uh, that's up to you if you want to spend the money on that or not. But Essentially just shortens the throw of the shifter so it feels more like a, a big bike shifter. Uh, it's kind of a preference thing. Some guys don't like them. Some guys have had issues but mine's been okay for me. So I like to spread that and kind of get it on there first because it just makes it easier. So this pin on the actual shift shaft is going to go in between that spring there. Now, I can't remember if I done made a boo-boo here, but I think you can get that behind there. Oh, yeah, there you go. So that's, that'll fit behind there. You don't got to worry about, I couldn't remember if you had to take this off or not to fit this 
back in there, but you don't need to. So, see how nicely that's slid in there? That means it is not bent and uh, the, you know, you lubed it up properly so that the shaft will go through the other side without fighting that seal. Now for your kickstart, you can't forget about this. This sits in between the end of the kick shaft, end of the kickstart shaft here, and the boss in the case. So, um, good practice to just put some lube on there. You never put it in dry. You always want to be nice and lube done. So, you see this tab right here? Right there. That This has to go under that. that so, when you install this, you, you put it under it when you're putting it in so that you just fight the spring into this hole instead of trying to fight that back. So. Basically. Okay. I can't really show you on the camera, but that tab is, is under there for me. So now you're gonna take this spring tip, fight that back into that hole, which ain't too bad. And now your kickstart is engaged and you're good to go. So next thing we got to move on to now is the actual clutch itself. Um, Takagawa sells this clutch in two different versions. This is their upgraded cover and their six disc clutch basket. Now, if you don't want to opt for the extra money for the clutch basket, you can use the stock clutch basket. Um, the details on it though are this primary drive gear. When you buy it from Takagawa, if you're going to run this with a stock basket, you have to run it with the 21 tooth or 22 tooth primary. This the aftermarket basket is a 21 tooth. Um, when you buy this, it, it usually comes with it. Um, there's, there's different ways to buy the kit. You can buy it with and without the primary, but all you gotta know is that if you're gonna use a stock basket, you have to have the 22 tooth drive. So if you already have a primary drive gear, since you, you might have put a manual clutch on already and you wanna run a Takagawa clutch now, you will have uh, a primary drive gear from your old setup and that one will probably be 22 tooth and you could use it on your stock basket but all I'm basically saying is that at the end of the day the Takagawa basket is a 21 tooth and so you can't if you mix those up it won't work so you got to have the 21 tooth primary for the sixth disc um, now on the back of here it is like a, a stock KLX basket as to where it has this this bushing here and then there's also a spacer that goes behind it as well so when you take it apart you'll remember this spacer that sits right on there and this goes in the clutch basket itself okay so this is what's going to sit on this shaft with this clutch basket. It's going to eliminate all that auto clutch weight. Uh, this really lightens up the crank, really makes it rip faster, it makes a huge difference. Um, you're going to have to slide these on together. You kind of got to reach back here, line up your spline so it'll all slide on together. You'll find the sweet spot and it'll drop right on. So then you've got your nuts. When you took it apart, they are the same, so you can't really mix them up. Yeah, these ones you can't mix up. They both both work on either one. I try to keep them on the same one, but uh, yeah, it doesn't always happen. So, and then these are a 19. My memory serves me 
correct? Yeah. Yes, I'm going to use this. Uh, you can use a torque wrench if you'd like. I've been doing this for a while, so I kind of just set them, you know, I feel it out myself, but uh, I'd recommend that you use a torque wrench if this is your first time doing it. should have a deep here but this will work for me. Alright. So now that you have all that installed, the Takagawa clutch comes this piece you gotta make sure that it's in the front side of the bearing here. It's like their little actuator pin. And that sits right, that whole setup is right in here. Just plops right down in there. Fuck me a little bit. Might be fighting the springs if the ends are hanging out. Yeah, the ends are hanging out, so there's a lip right here and it sits in this in this edge and if this spring's hanging out then it's gonna fight you. So you can just take a uh, flathead, kinda you know, work it down. Try and make it, probably give it a little tappy tap. Now that one's out of the way, it's, it's very easy. So, I mean, you're not putting hardly any pressure on them, no worries. Just make sure they're out of the way. You gonna slide in there for me now? Yep. So, it's all the way flush, it sits all the way flush. So you can't mistake that. On this Takagawa cover, there is a little seal right here that runs on the end here. So, you know, you want to make sure that you got some, some lube on there. Lube it up. Takagawa also provides this thin little washer. And that provides as a spacer for the case right there. Now you want to make sure that you have your oil strainer in. That sits right in there like that. It's very simple. There's nothing to it. I'll pull it out and show you, but that's it. So you also want to make sure that uh, you put some lubrication on the kick shaft, on the kickstart shaft seal. Is your fresh gasket on there? Uh, it might be in there. Got your two pins here. There's two dowel pins on this on this side of the case here. One over there, one over there. Okay. Make sure you get your seal the right way. Get the set on them dowels. Time to shove this beauty on. So that's it in there. Pretty simple. Everything's pretty simple so far. So right now you're going to be trying to find the nose of that shaft into the seal that was over here. Kind of just work it around and feel it and pop right in. No biggie. Then we got some clutch cover bolts. This is uh, one of those situations where um, I have ordered the 
the better bolts, the actual regular hex style head bolts off of eBay and I haven't got them yet, but um, I don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer on uh, this video. So it's been long enough. Get it done. Um, Takagawa actually does uh, send this kit with bolts. So you'll get Allen key bolts. Johnny bought this cover used. And uh, that's just what I'm using right now. Because um, I'm still waiting on my cover. I feel like the, uh, the Takagawa kit when they send you the bolts. I think there's a shorter one that comes for that particular spot there that works with their bracket. So that's why the stock bolt is bottoming out in there. But like I said, these will be Allen key bolts from Taki. So no need to even worry about that situation. It'll be beautiful. So that's the clutch side uh, pretty much buttoned up. Um, you will have a spring that goes on top of here and this washer goes on here and there's a spring that sits that controls this arm and, and makes it have a uh, sort of return on its own. Um, I don't need to show you guys that. Uh, if you can do all this, you can do that. Okay. So now we are going to move on to installing the cam chain. So remember, we're using the newer style, thinner cam chain. Get some clips down there like that. Run it onto your gear. Sitting on there. Here's your cam retainer plate. Basically, what prevents it, it just can't can't hop off. Two Phillips head screws. JIS, if you want to be specific. Those got the dot. JIS have a, um, actually, if you look at these bolts, they have a little dot. Japanese Industrial Standard, I believe, is what that stands for. Just make sure these are nice and snug. Get your case bolts in here and double check those those closed off, can't look at them later. One of the next things we want to install is this uh, timing chain guide. This controls the top, the arm from the tensioner comes down and that's what pushes the tension on the timing chain. So when you put this in, you want to make sure that you have the uh, there's a, a ridge on this. You want to make sure that's on the back side, side that's getting bolted to the block. Just like that. Put your bolts in. it there. Now we are going to install the flywheel. All right so we got the keyway in now. Next uh, step is to put the flywheel on. So you can see that there's a notch cut for the keyway there. 
you slide that on. Just line her up with the old keyway. Slide it on. Put your nut on. It's a 17 millimeter here. You see the impact, John Doe? All right. Now that you got that on, next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting the top end on because you're going to need this off to be able to see the, uh, the timing marks to put this at top dead center here. So the next step is going to be to put the piston on. We got the uh, the new high comp piston from TB Parts for 143 kits. Real nice. Part number on that is TBW 1390. This is for use with the V2 head. Wrist pin open. Got a tight little bag there. You got that. You've also got two clips that uh, that hold in your in your your wrist pin into the piston itself. So we'll get that open. So we'll get out here. Play those out. And you've got your ring pack. Now, there's a, there's always a thick black ring. That's your, your second ring on the piston. This is your top ring. You can see it's got beveled edges on it. It's a little bit skinnier than that than that second ring there. So these usually have a letter on them. So you can see there's an R on this one. That always faces up. Same thing with this one. There's an R on that one. Faces up. This is the oil ring. This is the first ring that goes on. And there's a ring that goes on each side of it. These do not have a letter. They can go on either way. They're beveled on both sides. Um, to check the rings, to make sure that your ring gap's gonna be correct, you need to lay your cylinder out. And then you are going to need a feeler gauge. So this is your feeler gauge setup. But basically to check, check your ring gap here. I'm gonna stick this in the cylinder. Then you can take your piston, use this kind of as the gauge to make sure you got it flat. So what I do, is you can see there's this flat on the piston here. I'm just pushing it until that's flush with the top. And that lets me know that the, the ring is even in there. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I don't have a .005 gauge on here, I have a .006. So I'm going to take that, just make sure that that gap's not smaller than that.
So the .006 fits in there, and it's it's pretty it's pretty taut. So this ring's good because .005 is perfect. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll take like a uh, .010 and I'll stick that in there. So that doesn't fit. So that makes me really happy because we're between that .005 and .012 spec for this ring. So this is perfect. We don't have to do any, any filing on this ring. So now we're going to install the rings on the piston. And in that situation, when you put these rings on, you have the splits in all these rings. You wanna make sure that none of these splits in these rings are lined up with each other on this piston or you're gonna have blow by. The first one you're gonna to wanna to put on is this goldish, bronzish looking ring. Really just Work that right into the bottom chamber there. Keep an eye on where your split is. I usually start, um, you know, in one part of the piston here, and then I just start clocking, uh, you know, every, about a quarter for every one. So on this next one, I'll slide on here. You can see that opening is here. I'm gonna put this opening from that one so that they're split up you gotta keep them separated now the next one do the same thing So now we got one gap here, one gap here, one gap here. Now the next ring I'm gonna put on, this is the thick black ring. Can't mistake it. It's the only one that looks like this. The R is on the top. I'm gonna put that on now. We're gonna put that gap right here on this part of the piston. Just kinda wanna work these down. Try not to gouge the piston. Uh, when you're putting these on, you know, have some some couth with it. Now that one's clocked right there. Now the next one, I'm going to clock with the other side of the wrist pinhole here. So we know they're all separated. It's going to all be done with your hands. Okay, so now we are ready to install that piston on the rod here. Make sure that you lubricate this before I put my this on the loop. Here we go. tip to make this easier when you do this is so you got your intake valve on the top so this piston is going to go this way exhaust valve is on the bottom now I'm going to be putting in the wrist pin from this side so I want to put the clip in this side so I have something to stop it when I'm sliding it in so putting these in can be a little bit challenging uh, once you get it it's, it's not bad but I always grip, there's a tang on it. I grip the tang. You wanna make sure you're at the outside of the pliers uh, when you have the wrist pin in because then you'll hit the wrist pin before you can get it in the slot. But on this side, it doesn't matter because there's no, there's no wrist pin in here yet. So you kinda angle the one end in like this. So you get it in there. And then you just kinda you gotta work this side in after that, which 
it's going to be challenging for me to do it for you guys with the camera, but I kind of work it in with my thumb, and then if you're not in the spot, you can you can kind of work it in there. That's all the way in a groove now. You can see that. Okay. So you kind of keep an eye on on your uh, on your ring spacing as you're touching the piston because they they are going to move around. So when you get this all on, you kind of got to go over it again and make sure it's good before you shove it in the cylinder. So now, as you can see, this side's still open. So I have the clip on the other side. You just kind of want to eyeball that. Line up your wrist pin with the rod there. And then just uh, start, you know, working it in. And you'll feel it, it'll drop in into a spot. It'll be perfect. I just make sure she's all the way in there. Now you gotta put the other clip in. So I got that one first try, that was nice. Um, you definitely want to make sure there's this little opening on the piston here. See this slot? You want to make sure that you don't have any of the open tangs in there. You want to make sure that that's a solid part of the uh, circlip. So now that that's in there, I'm going to check my my piston ring gaps again to make sure that they kind of stayed in place because the next thing you're going to be doing is getting the piston into the cylinder. So there's a gap there. We're all still good here on this. All the gaps are separated. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to put a very light coat of oil on the rings. Um, uh, this this is debated a lot on some people put it in dry um, and, and claim that you get better compression from it being dry when you put it in and um, I, I have to agree but I'm gonna put oil on here to create less controversy um, I actually have installed dry and with oil on the rings and I get better compression numbers with it being dry so take it for what you will um, try it for yourself uh, I've done enough motors to where I was able to try that. Most people are only building one motor, but uh, that's just my personal experience, so take it for what you will. Um, I do not lube the cylinder. This is going to go right on there exactly how it is. So you got to make sure you toss your base gasket on here. Your base gasket is a felt gasket. The gasket that goes on top of the cylinder where the head meets it is actually a metal gasket, so you'll know if it's the right one or not. Get your pins. Yeah. I'm going to pull the pins out of the cylinder head so I can... It's a lot easier, actually, if you have them in the block here instead of uh, in the head. Or, I mean, in the cylinder. makes it easier to guide on and keep the seal straight and everything so we're gonna go ahead and hope these will come out here that one came out easy sometimes these fight you if they do a little bit of heat really helps yeah and that one's really in there now I'm I'm not gonna gonna mess with that um, I can do it without taking these all the way out but really essentially you should heat that pull it out put it in here which one we got there yeah that's the bottom one so you want to make sure we're in the right spot so that just sits right in there there's a you know it's carved out for it to seat in there so now at least one's in there and it'll keep that gasket so much straight for me so now we're going to slide the cylinder on now, the most challenging part of this, obviously, is to get the rings into the cylinder. Um, I use my fingers and my fingernails. That's, that's the way that I do it. Uh, some people don't do it that way, but 
that's the way I'm going to show you. So basically, I right now I have the piston tilted, so one half of the ring is in already, and I keep pressure on the cylinder a little bit. And the next spot that needs to go in is right here. So I take my finger now, and I start working this ring in. And you can see that I will slowly but surely get this in. And if it gets tough and you can't use your fingernail, you can use a little tool. Obviously, you don't want to gouge the ring, so don't do that. But um, you kind of just, you got to be patient and just work it. So now that ring is in. Now you don't want to tilt the piston too much after that because uh, obviously you will tilt the top ring right back out and you'll be back at square one. So what I do is I just go to the next starting point of the ring and I push it in and then I start working it around again. Slowly get that piston to work in there. Make sure you keep a little bit of pressure on the cylinder and the piston to, so it doesn't slide back out on you. Kind of hard for me to show, but... So now we're at the last set of rings. The oil rings, usually you can kind of tilt the piston and work them in without having to, to fight them too much. You can push down on them a little bit with your nail, but a lot of times you can kind of get those those ones in just by tilting it like that. See how that just kind of slid in? So now we're in. We got fresh rings, fresh cylinder. This sits up in here. You're gonna get your, your cam chain to pull back through up here. You can feed it through your finger or use a magnet, whatever you wanna do. But here we are. We got that back up there. And this is going to go right back in here. Right in. That's it. That's all, all right. it does. There's a slot inside behind the flywheel that will you can see sit into. Right back there, there's a U-shaped groove. And that slides right into that and holds the tail of it. Super easy. So, bottom of your cylinder out here. I just work it out with my hands. Boom. Just make sure your stuff's all the way in. Now that's that's a done situation. You can see, got the fresh piston in here. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this to top dead center. So there's the T on the flywheel that we showed you guys before. That T is gonna line right up with that arrow. All right, so now we got that, got that set. Next step is to put on your head gasket. So this one's metal. It's not felt like the other gasket. And this bad boy slides right on here. Make sure you still got your dowels in there. Do never forget the dowels. Anywhere there's dowels, just pay attention. Make sure the dowels go back. Otherwise, this stuff doesn't work right. Uh, things don't line up right. So you gotta make sure that, that stuff's in there. Feed that on there. Boom, slides right on. Next thing you're gonna do is Get your head ready to go on. So, if you remember um, when we did the disassembly video and I showed you about setting it to top dead center before you took it apart, that's because as you can see, remember we talked about the free play. So this is all free now. Now if you had it on the other side of the cam, it would be in between the two lobes, which would it put the valve spring pressure on the cam itself and you wouldn't be able to manipulate it like this, which would make it very difficult for you to line everything up. So you wanna definitely be on this side of the cam, free side. 
So we're gonna get ready to slide this back on here. Don't forget your gasket, don't forget your dowels. There we are. We're gonna slide the uh, timing chain back up through here. Make sure you're not smushing any of your stuff here. Perfect. That slides right back on there. Boom. Okay, we're still at top dead center. Just double check and make sure. Now, a lot of times in the front here, you can kind of take the gear, kind of line her up by eye. Um, I like to stick something under here to keep the motor from tilting on you when you're working on it once the head's on because it's going to want to tilt on you but if you look here you got the two bolts two bolt holes that's going to be about there because there's your timing mark lined up so when you go to put this in here you kind of like pull the chain out like this to get close and that's looking like about where i where i want to be so i'm going to put that in there like that Usually you're not right the first time. I mean, it, it, that's the way it is, but sometimes you get lucky. But I can see that I need to go at least two teeth up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back off of here. Now I'm not gonna pull the chain back off of it, okay? I know that the gear needs to go this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed the gear that way. I'm gonna lift up this chain and take up two spots. Then I'm gonna feed that back around. I'm going to put it back on there. I'm going to see where I'm at. So now you can see I still need to go a little bit. I couldn't feel if I went two on that one or one, but it's, it doesn't matter. You can just keep it's a slow process and you just keep going until here we are. We're lined up right there. So now the cam, you can move it with your finger a little bit to line up those bolt holes. You look in here, you can see gotta get the bolt holes to line up with the cam since you're on the free side of the cam you can manipulate it wherever you want take your two allen key bolts uh, a lot of guys thread lock these I would it's already got a little bit of thread lock around them so they're still pretty taut for this Grab your little impact socket. Where did I put that? There it is. Johnny's got it hiding on me. Mark it down. Then you got your, uh, your your cam chain tensioner next. Now. Remember I told you guys I would show you how these work. There's basically a little tiny, you need a pocket screwdriver, but there's a little flathead up in here. It's gonna be really hard to see. But when you turn that, so right now this one is was already locked. So that's, that's what it looks like when it's extended all the way out. So if you put this in here, turn to the right. See how it's coming back? All right, so then when you get all the way to the right, it'll lock. That's your cue. Take it, put it right back in there. Take your two screws, bolts, per se. Um, these are tens. can see there's still some slack in here in the timing chain 
it's loose. But now, when you take this and you let her out, no slack in the timing chain anymore. So that's good. Um, next, you're gonna put on your four head bolts, nuts per se, and then there's two studs that go along with it. Now this, there's a copper washer. The copper washer goes on this bottom, bottom left one right there. Toss the rest of your nuts on here. Don't forget about these. Let's go in there. Very easy to forget about them. I've done a ton of these motors and I, I forget about them. I do these by hand. It's a ratchet. Um, for me, uh, I do Guten tight. I know what they should feel like, but you should follow the torque specs in the owner's manual. Um, Crisscross pattern. Tighten down a little two ten millimeters in here. The old cam chain tensioner bolt back on that hides the adjuster. that right there at that point you can kind of roll your motor over make sure everything feels right bring the timing back around line your timing back up make sure your timing mark still lines up top dead center with the arrow timing mark there it's perfect um, I don't have a plug in here right now so you're not going to feel a ton of compression, but when you put that plug in there, you'll start feeling that compression. But this feels real nice and healthy. So I'm quiet. Trans is good. It's in gear right now, so I can't really do anything about it, but you can see it turning with, with the flywheel. So um, at that point, we've got one gasket left. gasket that's right here. Um, actually, I don't have the dowel fin in there right Pins now. Are in the cover. Pins are in the cover still. So, if that'll come out, that would be wonderful. That one's going to come out. We're only going to get lucky on one again. We got wolves. Now I haven't really cleaned the gasket off of this super well. I just wanted to show you guys. Um, I still gotta polish this cover, so I'm not really gonna bolt it down per se. But we wanna be thorough, show you everything. So there you go and get your bolt kit from eBay so you can have nice bolts in here. You can go to Ace Hardware, you can pick up some stainless Allen key uh, bolts and those look great in here. And that was the really the only thing that will work because of the, uh, the recesses on the motor here. You won't be able to fit like a hex head bolt that doesn't, I haven't found anything that works well. So those, those Allen key uh, nice round head bolts work great. But um, there you have it. I mean, you gotta put your neutral safety switch back in, your cam cover and stuff back on, but I mean, as for building the motor, uh, that's about it. And it really isn't that hard. 
anybody can really do it. Just pay attention to the video, keep your uh, keep your parts together, use the, the bag method so you don't lose anything, and get after it so you can build yourself a nice mod motor for your mod bike. I appreciate you watching the video. Like and subscribe. Thanks for coming back to Simply Minis and watching what we have to offer. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video when we come up with something else that uh, we want to show you guys.